All right, and welcome back to the Vanu Podcast, the podcast making you invulnerable to the coercion of the state and the servile society. I'm your host, Shane, coming to you from the Fear Public of Pasnia, self creators paradise, pasnia.com is the website uh, if you want to learn more about uh, what I've got going on here, or if you want to become an honorary stakeholder and uh, become a more, a more concrete uh, more concrete part of uh, what uh, I hope to uh, develop here uh, in the future. So uh, with that said, today I've got a brief intermission episode for you, uh, the 56th inter- uh, intermission episode, uh, which I've titled Old Mining Towns and uh, Liberation in the Mountains, Vani Resistance Report from Vani Life March, sorry, Vani Life Number 1, not March, um, it's actually uh, May 1971. But uh, anyway, yeah, on this fine Sunday morning, I find myself digitizing more classic, pub- or I guess, uh, yeah, more classic Vani publications for free digital release, uh, as well as a special collector's edition paperback version. Uh, more specifically, Vani Life issues number one through ten. Uh, While well, situations in the Servile Society differ quite drastically, uh, and the technocratic coercion ramped up a thousandfold, if I remove the date, switch around a few words and details, you could you could rightly believe that this was a letter submitted to, say, the Pasnia Self Liberation Diaries in the year 2021. Published in May 1971, uh, in this inaugural Vani Life issue, you'll find people justifying their ascent into liberation with statements like. The people of this country abandoning reason, to name one example. My initial reply? May 1971. My God. My God, you haven't seen anything yet. Uh, Anyway, as usual, I found a really awesome Vani Resistance Report. I found a really awesome Vani Resistance Report, courtesy of Neil, Lorraine, and Kyle, a small family who remained flexible and open to unique opportunities. Uh, This took them to spending time uh, in mining towns with other self liberators. Wilderness Vanu in the Mountains with the Dairy Goat, uh, and more. Uh, so yeah, obviously this one piqued my attention, and uh, I think just uh, I'll provide more more details uh, later on. But um, yeah, I'll read the, the short submission with the Rose reply, provide some brief closing thoughts, and leave you with the rest of your day. But uh, yeah, of course this one got my attention. So uh, with that said, um, yeah, I'll be back after uh, with some closing thoughts. Please enjoy. Begin letter. Friends. We've really enjoyed all received issues of PI, Preform, Inform. First actual manifest key of hope, reality that's come along in, well, too long a time, since we're on the road. It's been about two years. For six years previous to coming here, Neil lived pretty much nomadically, and or as divorced from outside society, reality as was practical, rarely living in any place for longer than a few months. Since we hail from the east, most of that traveling was in and around New England but also back and forth to Canada, South America, and points west. Met Lorraine in Vermont, where we led a conventional existence for six months to get some money together. Split for California. Bought an old plumber's truck for $275. Built on a camper and took off. After nine months, ended up in Idaho, really dug it, and because Lorraine stabilized. Had no money, but found this old mining village with many good people and managed to rent a home. An old miner's boarding house, huge and empty, like a dormitory, on credit until we could find a way to bring in some income, which was not to be for about two months. Thanks to a lot of wild foods and a lot of dry food laid in California, we made it quite well. Having a kid didn't change much. Everybody helped, gave us diapers, etc. Like it here so much, country so beautiful, mountains, weather out of sight except long winters we didn't know then. When a house in our little town came available, we took it, super cheap. So that ended our nomadism for a while. Living out here, 12 miles from town, quiet, no hassles. We really dug it. Found that by working just a little, we could go for a few months at a time without working, and could just dig on the countryside, etc. Since we were really into good food, we got into ordering food for people and friends and neighbors. Here you can see it coming. We really blew it. A friend, we didn't know him then, got out of jail. He had a lot of bread and wanted to do something with it. He thought a health food store would be good for the area. He didn't know we were really into it, so we volunteered. He put up the money. We got into it, but just to start off, you know. That was a year ago. We got it together and think that by the end of summer, it'll take care of itself and we can drop out and let things happen from there. What we should have done, and are also beginning now to do, with those same friends and neighbors, was to start a direct charge cooperative. This works. Get items needed at wholesale, food, gas, clothes, whatever. Sell to members at wholesale, plus shipping and or transportation charges, if any. And if there are any other expenses, these are levied, per month, week, whatever, evenly, per member. 
thus enabling all to get things necessary for living much more economically and with as little hassle with capitalist retailers as is possible. Sun Valley is a super tourist area. Local merchants take great advantage of that at the expense of the local populace. Anyway, soon we'll be able to live in the mountains around here. We'd like to go for as long as possible. Friends have laid a horse on us, and we have a goat. Goats make fantastic pack animals in mountains, can go anywhere, and will carry Kyler and give milk. We'll also breed with mountain goats. Might be a real good thing. We have friends who live three and a half miles from here in two sheep camps. Have to ski in. It's a good trip. Also, many people live in, some abandoned, some not, cabins, trailers, etc., which are accessible only by skiing in. However, when the snow goes, so does your privacy and easiest mode of transport. But when snow goes, you can move back into mountains. Usual season for mountain travel, late June or July through September and October. This winter was long and heavy, but last year was okay. Entirely possible to live all summer in mountains away from anybody. There are quite a few who spend weeks and months doing so, and occasionally run into each other. Mountains are pretty rugged, though, and running into usual run-of-the-mill camper tourists is pretty rare. Except for the occasional helicopter-dropped camp, you can't win at all. So if we stay here, and we'd like to be here for a year, living free of all society's encumbrances, give up our house, etc., we'll probably do something like that. In summer, the fishing is great. We're presently making all our unpacking gear, etc. We didn't have anything when we came, and are hoping and planning to spend quite a bit of time away from it all. We've often thought of living around southwest Oregon, Cape Junction, but somehow we never made it over there. What's it like? Peace. Neil, Lorraine, and Kyler. Near Sun Valley, Idaho. Reply. Much thanks for the info on your area, which trades for a renewal next time. Southwest Oregon has rather mild winters with much rain and snow. Snow doesn't last long except at higher elevations. There are creeks running the year-round and even the smaller valleys. Great variety in topography and vegetation. Coast mountains quite different from Siskiyou's, which are different from volcanic cascades. Woods range from relatively open park-like forests of the southern Cascades to dense coastal forests, to trees plus heavy underbrush, to brush alone on some southern slopes. Summers are hot except along the coast. I haven't been east of the Cascades much. Rayo. You've just heard a couple of letters from the May 1971 edition of Vanu Life, Vanu Life number 1, which will be available via Liberty Attack Publications, LibertyAttack.com and Special Collector's Edition paperback format, or at vanupodcast.com at some point when it is completed. So uh, there, uh, <laughs> there we have it. So I guess just a, a couple of a couple of things that came to mind. Um, and the, the first one I'll mention is uh, their their idea of, um, I guess the the, the cooperative. Um, I think this would be great. Uh, I think well, I think this will just naturally develop at some point. Um, <laughs> it'll just be a proxy merchant role. Yeah, the proxy merchant uh, will have his uh, forged immunity passport. Um, he will uh, take the uh, the Pasni dollars or the uh, Bitcoin or whatever people decide to uh, to trade with, and uh, then he'll uh, he'll go spend the uh, the digital uh, the digital dollar or whatever uh, whatever the folks come in. So yeah, it'll just be a proxy merchant role um, with a, with a number of steps, um, number of steps. <laughs> yeah, I think that'll that'll just be a, a natural thing. Uh, so I think that's a, a great idea, and in some ways that's that's kind of already happening. Um, yeah, in some ways. So uh, that was just just one thing that came to mind. Uh, I guess an early proxy merchant role um, is uh, what these folks uh, what these folks played. Uh, they saw an opportunity and they uh, they filled it. So um, very good. Uh, next, obviously, they, they talked about their liberation in the mountains. I think it's brilliant to take a dairy goat with you. Um, absolutely brilliant. Um, yeah, they mentioned uh, a couple of the couple of the benefits, but uh, you know, fantastic pack animals and uh, yeah, the dairy the, the milk is great. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think that's uh, that's just a really, really good adaptation, and they got my attention. So I don't know why I really, didn't, really didn't think about that. Um, but yeah, the the thought crossed my mind. It's like, well, shit. If I ever gotta, if I ever gotta leave, I'll just toss Willy, toss Willie too on a on a leash and take him through the woods. He'll be all right. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I guess uh, otherwise uh, on this one, I I just I just found it a, a, a valuable uh, yeah valuable submission. Yeah, valuable submission, and this was uh, just a, I guess, a, a report on a couple few years um, of their uh, of their liberated lifestyles, and um, yeah, certainly unique, certainly unique. Uh, yeah, the kind of the uh, the camp, the, the van nomadism, uh, to finding us uh, finding a mining camp and uh, staying there, working out an agreement with uh, some liberated folks, 
and uh, then Liberation in the Mountains, and uh, yeah, all all on a matter of, of a pretty short time. And I know just uh, that month and a half in Acapulco, um, and kind of the the travel down through Mexico uh, that went uh, went super super fast. Um, went super fast, but there was a, a lot of experience there, a lot of experience in a short time. So yeah, that that few years, um, if you consider I guess survival society time, it probably felt like ten. I guess uh, let me see if there's anything else here. Not really. Um, not really. I guess uh, I, I'll mention that <laughs> um, they didn't really always always write in complete sentences. Maybe it was for I don't know if they just uh, weren't weren't great at uh, writing or if they did it for the sake of I guess saving um, you know saving ink or print print space or whatever for whatever reason. Um, I just wanted to toss that in there and if it, if it sounded kind of fragmented, um, that wasn't me. That was just. <laughs> it was just the, the the way they wrote the letters. So, um, yeah, I guess that's uh, that's all for today. Um, I'll uh, be continuing to uh, digitize uh, Vanu Life this afternoon, um, this this morning and this afternoon uh, after I finish the uh, the video the video for this. Um, so yeah, I'll say if you if you want to read this article, you can go to vanupodcast dot com forward slash tvp int fifty six. Again, vonniepodcast.com forward slash tvpint56. I'll uh, drop the full article there, the text of the full articles, or I guess the letters. I will uh, drop the video, um, which I will be putting together after I uh, finish up this uh, uh, finish up this recording. And, uh, yeah, otherwise, uh, Pasnia.com, the Free Republic of Pasnia. If uh, any of this uh, resonates with you, if uh, you're looking to... Uh, connect with other like-minded individuals who are against co- against the use of coercion, against all of this, um, you know, just anti-human nonsense happening in the survival society. Um, then uh, we'd certainly love uh, for you to for, to first join us in, a, in the digital second realm. Um, we've got uh, Telegram groups, uh, um, a, a number of Telegram groups uh, for Pasnia. Uh, I've got um, yeah, email lists. Uh, I've got all sorts of uh, really cool things. Pasnia dot com. And uh, again, you can become an honorary stakeholder if you want to become a more concrete part of uh, what we have going on here. Uh, if you like what you see, and again, if you resonate with what we're doing here, um, there's uh, certainly going to be a lot more. I wanted to open up more into uh, kind of a spiritual and medical co-op um, as well. Um, so th- these are all things that I, I want to happen down the road. Uh, uh, talk. Uh, yeah, there's. <laughs> There's a lot. Um, there's a lot of talked about doing here. Um, it'll take time, but uh, yeah, it'll take time. But at the, at the same time, um, things are happening very, very quickly, and uh, things are coming together very nicely. So, um, if any of this does interest you, please go to passingit.com and uh, at least hop on the email list. I don't send out. I think I've sent out like two or three emails, and that was <laughs> that was the last one was was probably two or three months ago. So yeah, just hop on there. If any, anything uh, comes up, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, reach out. And uh, the last thing I'll, I'll say is we do have the first event at Pasnia this year scheduled last weekend in March. Um, it's a private event, but uh, if uh, you are interested in coming, please do um, join that Telegram group. Let me know you're interested. And uh, if uh, you've been properly vetted, then uh, you'll be uh, then, then I'll uh, get you the information. But uh, yeah, I guess that uh, that about wraps. Up, uh, I guess that uh, about wraps it up. Uh, again, this will uh, Vonnie Life will go out um, in a. Uh, I guess Vonnie Life issues number one, numbers one through ten will go out as a special paperback format uh, at some point. Don't know when I'll get this finished up. Um, but yeah, libertarianattack dot com. Um, you can get on the uh, Vonnie Olia Publications uh, email list if you want to there and uh, get some free books, um, as well as uh, when this eventually gets finished. Uh, I don't know when. Uh, there's a lot. Uh, there's a lot of typing. <laughs> A lot of typing, and uh, yeah, I think I'll uh, stop rambling there. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in, and uh, always remember, Bonnie was yours for the making. See you guys. Rayo was right. Freedom does indeed need more full-time professionals, not collective movement preachers seeking a coterie of followers, but explorers, inventors, developers of liberated life ways. Undoubtedly, numerous folks are truly seeking a way out of the servile society, but they don't see any options outside of political crusading or apathy. Many are being emotionally and physically broken down by the 9-to-5 grind, the daily pressures of the servile society, and the recognition of how truly unfree they really are. That being the case, our task as Venuans now becomes self-liberation and marketing in that order. Reason being, if we were ever going to see an alternative economy, a sovereign free port, a new libertarian country, or whatever other grandiose strategy comes into fruition, we need to first break people free from the servile society and into a lifestyle change of their choosing. 
Additionally, if we are ever going to see the abolition of the state, we must do our damnedest to eliminate the market demand for it. A great way to do that is by showing individuals that there are other options, and to help them in the process as much as possible. Some entrepreneurs may even be able to monetize such a venture in the form of consulting or the development of tools or services to ease the transition from the first realm to the second realm. Rayo's first book, Vaughn of the Search for Personal Freedom, was initially published in 1983. 35 plus years later, many of these strategies are just as practical now as they were then, if not more so thanks to the evolution of technology. Yet, some recommendations he and others posited are extremely outdated, destined to fail in the modern day. Vanu is based upon reality, not legality, and therefore, it will develop according to the external factors of the present time. Freedom is not free. It takes time, effort, money, an extreme amount of dedication, and a willingness to make sacrifices. It requires the willingness and ability to create, develop, and to problem solve, as we are the self-liberators of the 21st century, pioneering the path forward to a freer future. It is not for everybody, and neither is Vaughn. There's no better way to end this book than with these wise, timeless words from our friend and posthumous mentor, Rayo. Quote, Avenuan to me is not just someone living in a particular manner. Lifestyles may change. A lifestyle which was Vanu 100 years ago may not be Vanu today. Some lifestyles Vanu today were not possible 100 years ago and may not be Vanu 50 years from now. Avenuan is someone who places a high value on relative invulnerability to coercion. Someone for whom freedom is worth a fair amount, though not infinite, of effort, inconvenience, discomfort. To Avenuan, Vanu is not just a means to other ends, nor is it an ultimate end. Like most qualities of life and life itself, it is both. Avenuan will choose whatever way of living offers personal sovereignty, and will change lifestyle again and again, if necessary. End quote. Your free future is closer than you think. This was an excerpt from my book, Vanu, A Strategy for Self-Liberation, available in the Self-Liberation Bundle. Just visit libertyunderattack.com forward slash SL Bundle to snag every book we offer at a huge discount. Currently 18 books. Again, libertyunderattack.com forward slash SL Bundle is where to go to pick that up. And to view our full catalog, please visit libertyunderattack.com. LUA Publications. Share your story. Find your freedom.